first of all, uh, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to show some of my works to uh, such an auditorium. So about this a little bit enigmatic image. Uh, first of all, this is a real photo. It's, it's not a computer generated, it's not a Photoshop or whenever. And uh, this, just in the center of St. Petersburg, uh, the junction of the facade of some uh, neoclassical building uh, of uh, the beginning of 19th century and some sort of extension built in 1970s. And uh, it speaks better even without any explanations. So this is a, some spirit of, of uh, our time. In which direction should we go there? Uh, also, uh, here we can see some buildings which were built and constructed in the same century, in the same city. This is again St. Petersburg, uh, some uh, buildings of uh, 1950s and of 1990s, also here and here. And uh, I'm wondering, still wondering why and how uh, we torn to such a strange direction. Uh, and I deeply believe that uh, architects, maybe they're, uh, they're thinking too much about themselves, uh, thinking that they, they can, that, that they can change the quality of life, but at least we can provide a proper frame for other health activities. So about this framing, I will talk. This is again uh, the dead end we have in, in, in all, all post-socialist, uh, post-communist countries, and in, especially in, in Russia, uh, with the development and with the, let's say, usual, I, I would not say normal, usual uh, way of, of build uh, houses. For me, this is not an architecture at all. Uh, it's something different. Uh, I, I personally feel, feel this uh, as a sort of uh, storage parcels to keep human bodies during the night. It's not a house, it's not a home, it's, it's something like this. So then, uh, when after, after some years of career as, as an architect of luxury private houses, some group of developers uh, asked me to uh, make some proposal. What else we can do, not, not this? And uh, while thinking about this presentation, I, I find two or three sketches uh, I, I made about nine or eight years ago. This is just, just the generic ideal way how to, how it should be, from my opinion. Then like, like it's going back to normal practice of uh, urban blocks, of, of uh, some hierarchy where you can understand where is the road, where is the street, where is the boulevard, courtyard, facade, backyard, or whatever. So to, 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 to provide some hierarchy and also this was how to solve the problem with vehicles to put the parking under, under the courtyards and to provide the courtyards free of, of uh, any cars for children to, to be free there, etc., etc. Which uh, it's nothing new but since uh, I'm definitely not a modernist, so for me to say if I did not invent anything new is, is not a blaming. It's fine. So as a result, within the last uh, eight years, we made uh, the master plans and all the architectural projects for vast number of places around Moscow. This is just some master plans and everything of this or already built 
sold out and inhabited or under construction. So I'm proud to say that uh, at that moment, uh, in the apartments uh, we produced uh, in this manner, which is connected to traditional architecture and new principles of new urbanism, uh, more than 25,000 people al already living, and much more are preparing to to be inhabitants of this. So, and, and, and then I will try to show some uh, projects of, of mine. This is again. This is uh, the, the map of, uh, of Moscow and uh, some places around just, just next to city border with all this satellite development. Well, uh, first project uh, I would like to show briefly uh, is uh, was connected with the Olympic Games uh, in, so for, in Sochi, uh, Winter Olympic Games. This was one of the Olympic villages, uh, and uh, now it is successfully uh, acting as, as a ski resort. So this was my initial sketch. And also, also this is the way how to explain your ideas before making the project. That's why it's so important to uh, any architect to be able to draw, uh, to, to explain your ideas before you will be ready to make a computer-generated images, etc., etc. Also, another initial ideas, master plan. And this is the complex which is already built. I would say a couple of words about this. First of all, this is from some sophisticated point of view. It's a little bit quotation of uh, Tiberius Villa on Capri without any political things, please, for the moment. Uh, but uh, what is important that this is a five-star hotel uh, with the splendid views to the mountains, but in the same moment, it is a, a retaining wall, which structurally keep, keeps uh, this uh, mounting from uh, any structural problems. And this was very interesting, and uh, it was built. And then again, you can see the uh, landscape. And uh, my goal here was to create not just a number of, of uh, separate buildings, uh, beautiful or not beautiful, does matter, but to create some uh, feeling of urban space. Uh, the piazzas, uh, the streets, and, and to keep this splendid uh, area uh, with the architecture which would not spoil the impression of, of all these uh, breathtaking landscapes. So this is the aerial view of, of the overall complex. It was maybe difficult because uh, uh, it's on, on the slope and the slope is steep, so difference between the down and up is about uh, 200 meters. So it was tricky uh, to, to provide all, all this for Paralympic Games also to, to make any given space available for, for all uh, auditorium. And this is again one of the initial drawings, so you can compare that what is, is the, the pride of architect is to keep his initial idea till the end, more or less. Then uh, one of, of uh, these uh, uh, private projects for development. Uh, I selected this because it's already finished, or finalized, inhabited uh, within a few years. So it's already, we, we can see how it works as, as a part of, uh, of the city. And uh, this again, 
couple of initial drawings. And the, the place itself is very interesting because uh, here is the natural river, which must be protected from ecological point of view and, and whenever else. And uh, as a, some strange paradox may be, to protect the river, uh, I decided to make uh, two artificial channels which are visibly connected with the river, but, but physically not, to don't change the ecological way of, 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 their, uh, of the river. But uh, it keeps uh, all the water and everything, so we don't touch uh, the river uh, in any case uh, here. Uh, well, this, this is a master plan. So uh, here, mostly are uh, urban blocks of about uh, from four to uh, eight levels, and also townhouses and, and school, couple of kindergartens and everything. And uh, also, uh, we try to uh, provide uh, the kids with the possibility to reach kindergarten and school without crossing any uh, roads or, or some uh, heavy loaded streets. So it's safe. This is the uh, computer generated view. And you can see the structure of the courtyards there, as, as on my sketch. They're uh, closed from the cars and with the playgrounds for children in them. There are some other drawings and the same view already built with this water mirror. Again, and even with this inhabited bridge uh, over the channel with the four uh, apartments which were sold at about maybe four or five times more expensive than the usual, of course. Uh, density here is uh, high, what uh, for me it's better for, 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 for the urban feeling. Uh, and uh, uh, we made some special effort to uh, provide the visual relaxation for people, for all these water uh, mirrors and uh, some enfilade arcades through the blocks. So when you are staying on some small piazza or through the Anfilado arcades, you can see some remote uh, woods or, or some landscape, like, like here. This is the example of this pedestrian passage through the house. This is the, how the embankment of the existing natural river is looking, and uh, also this. This is a school courtyard. And this is, this is uh, important for me uh, to create, uh, you know, first of all, what, what, what is my criteria? Is, is the project successful or not? As, as any proper criteria is, is very clear. So if you are living in some of these apartments, and you have surprisingly nothing to do for half an hour. Uh, you can walk out without car and just spend half an hour in the, in, on this territory and come back in your apartment with better mood than before. If it is done, it means that everything else is done also. Uh, and uh, uh, as for this slide, uh, when, when you are creating some space for people to live, you have to understand that uh, this will be a zero point of coordination system uh, for him, and th this will, will be literally the center of world. And that's why uh, the hierarchy of, of private spaces and public spaces should be created, and uh, any city has a borders. And even here on this small, relatively small uh, scale, I think uh, here are about uh, 12,000 inhabitants 
in this particular district. Uh, we try to solve two problems uh, together. Uh, one is the problem of uh, car parkings, of course, because uh, everybody has, has a car now and not one for the family, of course. And this, this is a really problem. Uh, and uh, then um, what we try to do, uh, may the car uh, parkings uh, in an absolutely normal technical way, but like a sort of city walls on the periphery, especially from, from the directions where we have to protect uh, from, from the road, for example. And here is the example of, uh, of, of this approach. So, and this somehow continued just on the decorative aqueduct. Water again. Well, this is one recent uh, project which we are working on. Uh, and uh, this was a challenge even, even after all our experience because this is because of the scale is already a city because it is intended uh, to bear about 65, 70 thousand of inhabitants. So it's, it's a city and this scale is better because with this size you can provide all the facilities you have to have in the city. Marketplace, city administration, uh, some concert hall or whatever, everything. Uh, and uh, so we, we decided first of all to use this, this experience with the artificial channel. Here, the green uh, spaces. The, uh, again, here with the red, you can see this uh, multi-storage uh, parking lots uh, to uh, create a protection from, from the transit uh, uh, highway. There are some public spaces. Uh, in the red here, you can see the, the, we, we did not do any supermarkets. Here, instead, we decided to uh, make a, a special uh, pedestrian street uh, for retail things, like, like, like a, some journey through uh, all the space uh, to create a, another way of normal human activity. Well, and this is some images of uh, what should be done there. And this is interesting because uh, since the scale of project is, is big enough, uh, it's possible to go further with some interesting ideas. Uh, and uh, this is again this parking city wall, but with the terraces toward, toward the city, terraces with the gardens on it. Uh, with this, we provide people with the views from the windows. Imagine how dull it is to have your windows toward the parking lot. But here it's something different. And also we increase the number of uh, green spaces, which is available to work on. And also with this we can reduce the distance between this parking and, 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 and the uh, uh, the houses, and uh, of course we have, we have to think about the economics too, because if architect would not think in the terminology and categories of developer about density, square meters per hectare, etc., etc., he will do just one project. He will never proceed. And this, this is again to uh, make the passage to the nature more delicate, is reducing the scale of, of the houses toward the periphery. This is another view. And then at the end of uh, my presentation, uh, I will change the scale 
of the project and, and the approach of, of the project in a very serious way because uh, some samples of my regular work were of uh, vast scale and this will be a very, very private and small scale, let's say development. And this, this is just some photo of a typical Armenian landscape with the biblical Ararat and the medieval church in front of it. And this is a postcard image, and the next one is much less postcardish. This is my native village, which was uh, burned out and devastated during the uh, ethnical conflicts uh, immediately after the disintegration of Soviet Union. So uh, it, it's, well, let's say, you have some, some feelings when, when you see your, your, your uh, village which you remember inhabited and uh, in, this, in, in the condition which you know pretty well from some uh, Roman uh, cities in Algeria or wherever. It's like, or like archaeology. And so uh, somehow being there I decided to uh, rebuild the village and to bring back the inhabitants there and because of, uh, of the remote position of the village and, and uh, all other circumstances, it was quite a difficult. So I decided, first of all, to build a church, try to make, make some, here are some initial sketches. And uh, this is, I, I prepared a model to make the idea clear to local church authorities and uh, the local archbishop was very easy, easy to do a person and uh, this is our first meeting and uh, at the end he decided, okay, tomorrow we will take my car and go there to consecrate the place. That's how, how it works. And this, this was, you can see, you can see the archbishop, you can see the model because he insisted, put your model exactly where the church will be built and and my family there. It was uh, 2011, the year. And then uh, I insisted to build in an absolutely traditional way because this was, in all my career, the only one project with no contradictions between client and architect. So I decided to use uh, traditional methods and uh, I heard not the builders but the very, very experienced team of restorators of medieval churches to keep all, all the detailization in proper way. This is the ceremony of uh, putting the cross on the top. And now uh, this is a real photo how this church now works with the landscape. Uh, it's uh, over, above and all over the uh, remains of the village. Some details. Interior. Again, again, the, the, the architecture and the landscape. And then uh, after this, it was much easier to go to the authorities and to explain why on this particular remote place with, with the traces of war, with the destroyed uh, infrastructure, I want to do something. Church was a good argument. And then so uh, I decided to build five uh, private houses of such uh, some uh, good scale, that's about 250 meters each with natural stone, uh, natural clay roof tiles uh, in, in the manner of, of all the old buildings of this village. And uh, as for master plan, we decided to, to find the places for new, new uh, houses as if the village would be alive. So just to continue the, uh, the fabric. Uh, and you can see the church is, is uh, in blue and, and the red is in new, uh, new houses. Uh, and the very traditional uh, language of, of, of local uh, private houses architecture. Uh, and uh, this is the recent photos of one week ago, maybe, uh, the houses are under construction. 
uh, and uh, the last last photo I would finish with is the banquet which was right there on the mountain top near the church when the church was consecrated after the ceremony. And this is very promising for me that we can do something with architectural means to people. That's it. Thank you.